Test, test. Can everybody hear me okay? Good morning. Can I get everybody to uh, take a seat, please? I'd like to, uh, to welcome everyone to our first, and I hope annual, STEM conference. Uh, my name is Michael Wolfston. I'm the, uh, the executive director of the Foundation for Catholic Secondary Education. I raised the money for uh, West and Catholic Centrals for their scholarship funds. And uh, we put this concept together last January, February. And uh, we, we sent out flyers to all the public schools in the uh, West Michigan area through Kent Intermediate. We sent flyers out to all the home schools, to the Christian schools, to all the Catholic schools, to all the Girl Scouts. Uh, and uh, the first week out, we didn't have any responses. And I started to panic and thought, my gosh, this thing is going to fall flat on its face. Uh, by the end of the second week, we had uh, 170 young ladies register. And believe it or not, we turned away, we turned away 200 and 17 young ladies. I, I just had to send seven young ladies home who just showed up to register at the door. The, uh, the conference was filled with 170. We just don't have any more room uh, or enough volunteers. Uh, this is a, uh, a conference that was put together by the Foundation for Catholic Secondary Education, the uh, West Catholic, Catholic Central, Kettering University, Grand Rapids Community College, uh, uh, what's, what's the college out there in Allendale, uh, Grand, Grand Valley, <laughs> Grand Valley, uh, the retired, uh, 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 women, uh, what's, what's their professional name? I'm having young timers disease this morning. I'm starting to block. Uh, but anyway, we put together seven great groups to put this conference together. And it's all for you young ladies, fifth through eighth grade. We want you to expand your minds today. We want you to start thinking about science, technology, engineering, and math as career fields. We want you to get excited about going to school on Monday and learning that algebra or learning that math or learning that science program. We want you to start thinking about a career in science, technology, engineering, and math and then we want you to come back and do that career in the West Michigan area. We want you to be professionals in this area. Your mind is the most important thing. And out of this conference, we want your mind to, to be challenged. We want you to go out of here feeling good about yourselves and feeling good about STEM. There's nothing that can stop you but yourselves. So please, today, relax, enjoy, and learn. And uh, this is our first time. We're going to make this an annual event, I think. Uh, we're going to sit down and reevaluate everything here in a couple of weeks. And uh, I promise you next year we'll, we'll have a better system to check you in. Uh, we were a little congested this morning, but you know, you, you grow as you go. And uh, thank you for coming. Uh, if you have any questions, if you need anything, if you have any problems, seek somebody out in a yellow shirt, okay? All the ladies in here with yellow shirts are mentors, and they'll be more than happy to help you. If you have a medical need, raise your hand, and we'll be there to help you. If you have a food allergy, and I know there were 13 young ladies that sent in food allergies, but only four of you checked in this morning. Aaron, in the back of the room, he has his hand up. There's, there's nine of you who have food allergies. Erin, you want to come up and just talk about the food allergies and, wh and what we're doing if we don't, don't hook you up real quick like? Sure, this is Aaron. Aaron's in charge of the food program here. He's the guy uh, whose staff has put out all the food and is going to be providing the lunch and snacks and everything. So Aaron, what do you have to say about food allergies? They're a serious thing, and we want to make sure that everybody's is, is needs are addressed and met. I do have a short list of, of different concerns that, that were shared with us yesterday. So if you do have an allergy, please come see me and, and we can uh, make sure you understand exactly what is or isn't on the table that might be a, an issue, uh, an allergy concern for you. Um, I, I think 
if, if there's if we need to make any accommodations, more than happy to to prepare something for you as well. So please come see me. I'll be uh, in the back here for a little while yet. And then if if I, you, you can't find me, somebody in the yellow shirt can track me down. I should be back in the offices. So thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Once again, parents, if you need a parking pass for this morning or for this afternoon, see me. I'll get them to you. At this time, I'd like to introduce, uh, is it doctor? No. no. Mr. Steve Abid. 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 Steve and I uh, have worked together for the last year helping put this committee together, and Steve's going to make an introduction. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. With this number of young women, I thought there'd be a lot more energy in the room. Let's try that again. Good morning, everybody. That's what I like to hear. All right, moms and dads, in a little while, we're going to let you go on the, on the rest of your day, and your daughters are going to be here with us today. They're going to have a great time. They're going to be in good hands. You don't have to worry about anything. Plus, you can go uh, do some uh, really important things like buy stuff. Uh, I am a professor of economics here at Grand Rapids Community College, and I was on the Catholic Secondary School Board last year when Michael approached me and asked if I'd like to be involved in this, and I thought there would be nothing better that I could do to help uh, foster the enthusiasm and the interest in these very, very important fields among young women. And I see a number of young women that uh, I've encountered throughout my teaching here at Grand Rapids Community College and uh, in, in, in uh, meetings I've been at at both uh, West Catholic and Catholic Central. And I'm glad that you're back here helping to uh, pass it forward, as they say, and uh, help these young ladies gain an interest in the same fields that you're interested in. I don't want to take up too much time. My uh, sole purpose this morning was to introduce the person that's going to officially welcome you here. This is my boss. Dr. Hilda Haley, she is the provost of Grand Rapids Community College, and for those of you that don't know, the provost is like the most important person that a faculty member has to worry about. So, Dr. Haley, thank you. Good morning. I mean, we've done this before. Good morning. It is so nice to have you here. It's obviously going to be an amazing day for you, and we are so very happy to have you here at Grand Rapids Community College. I hope you have a fun day and that you learn lots and lots. Um, I get to introduce to you, and we need to get right to it, right? Because you've been waiting already too long. I get to introduce your speaker for this morning. And we really need to thank her because she's here because she really cares about you, about women in science, in technology, engineering, and math. And she herself is an assistant professor of chemical engineering in Ket Kettering University. She comes all the way from the other side of the state. Um, we had a different speaker for today in the program, but she couldn't make it. And she, uh, Mary, Dr. Mary Gillian was so happy and so eager to come and share with you, and we're so happy to have her here. She is also a yoga practitioner and a mother, so she really cares about all of you. Um, it is with great pleasure that I get to introduce Dr. Mary Gillian. Mary? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's so nice to see so many of you show up here today on a Saturday morning. You could be sleeping, you could be watching TV, you could be doing any number of things, but you chose to be here. So I want you to give yourselves a round of applause loud round of applause for being here good for you good for you so um, i am uh, dr mary gilliam i am a assistant professor of chemical engineering at kettering university i teach chemical engineering to college students and i also practice scientific research can somebody tell me what scientific research is yep Finding stuff about science stuff, like mm -hmm. um, the in like the universe. Yep, exactly. Yep. So it's um, solving problems. It's the study of understanding the world around us. 
right? Developing new knowledge and theories to explain uh, the laws of physics, the laws of chemistry, um, anything to explain the world around us, right? So I am a plasma scientist. Can anyone tell me what plasma is? Besides my daughter? <laughs> yes. I think plasma is like some noun. It's a noun, yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, it's not a liquid or a gas or solid. It's like sort of like jellyish. Well, you're, the first part is right. It's not a liquid, gas, or solid, but it is a state of matter. Um, it's if you're thinking of blood plasma, maybe it has some kind of jellyish consistency. But uh, one more person. It's like heat or light. Uh, another good answer. Yeah, it, it, a plasma has uh, much energy, much heat, and it also emits light. So plasma is the fourth state of matter. So if you think about water, at a very low energy state, it starts off as what? A solid, which is ice. Good. Then if you add more energy to it, more heat, it could change phase and become a? liquid, add more energy and heat, and it could become a gas or steam. And if you add even more energy and heat to that, it could become a plasma, where it ionizes. Now, plasma can also be generated here on Earth in special uh, chambers called plasma chambers. And in those chambers, it's actually considered a type of a cold plasma. And that can actually be, actually be utilized for many different uh, purposes, such as in medicine, it can be used for sterilization, it can be used for wound healing or dentistry. Um, it also can be used as a potential source of energy, fusion power. So it's much cleaner, much safer than uh, current nuclear power. Doesn't have a chance of a runaway heat reaction, right, that could cause a meltdown. Um, so current research is underway right now, and it's projected that by the year 2050 that we will have uh, sources of fusion power on large scale. Who can tell me one example of plasma? <laughs> yep. Lightning, very good. Yep, that's a good example of a natural plasma here on Earth. Would a plasma screen TV be an example? Yes, it would. That's another good example of the use of plasma um, for our uh, society. So plasma TVs, um, plasma to make uh, microelectronics, uh, plasma in the semiconductor industry. A lot of hands. <laughs> That's good. One more. The sun. Very good. Yep, the sun is a source of plasma. Actually, most of the matter in the universe is in the plasma state. Did you know that? No, yes, maybe. Now you do, right? Yes. <laughs> so I didn't wake up one day and suddenly become a plasma scientist. It started when I was very young. By the time I was in second grade, when I was actually first introduced to science as a subject, probably all of you were introduced a little bit earlier, right? But I knew I loved science. How many of you, when you were younger, knew that you had an interest in science or math? Raise your hands. Many of you. Good, good, good. So I knew that as well. I always loved science as a kid. And in my day, it wasn't considered cool to be um, a scientist or to like science or math. And I don't know how it is these days. Is it still kind of the same or has it changed? It's changed. Good. Good. I'm happy to hear that. But I didn't care anyway. I knew what I liked. I liked science, and I made friends with other kids who liked science as well. So, and um, when I was in high school, I had, um, I took chemistry, physics, and math, and I had one particular teacher who really inspired me in science. He was a chemistry teacher, and he brought real life examples. He really just instilled a love of chemistry in me. Can any of you name a teacher you have who maybe inspired you in science or math? Raise your hand if you have a teacher or somebody who really inspired you in science or math. Maybe a couple names. 
Yeah. Who was your teacher? Mr. Guma? Grima? Who was your teacher? And what did she teach? Science. Mm -hmm. Mr. Philman, and what did he teach? Science. Good. So many of you. That's good. So I went to college at University of Missouri, Columbia, and I actually started off as a biology major. And I was in biology for about one semester. I realized that wasn't quite for me, um, but many of you probably are interested in biology. It's interesting, but for me, I knew that I loved physics and chemistry and math. And I came across some friends who um, were in a chemical engineering program. I had never heard of chemical engineering before. Have any of you heard of it before? I'm sure you have now, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, I thought it was a perfect way to combine my love of physics, chemistry, and math. And it really did, and it turned out to be a perfect choice for me. So many of you will choose, uh, will go through the same types of decisions when you get to college, um, and eventually you'll find, you'll find your path, you'll find your right niche. Uh, but what I also found um, in industry, um, I worked in industry for about five years, is uh, it doesn't necessarily matter so much what area of science you have your degree in, but oftentimes on a single project or an area of research, you might have many different types of scientists working on it. So I've worked with physicists, chemists, I've worked with many different types of engineers, mechanical engineers, um, chemical engineers, electrical engineers, and um, each, each field brings its own perspective on the same type of a problem or issue. So, and then I, uh, I became interested in plasma when I was in college, and there was a professor at my university who um, was a pioneer in plasma research. His name was Professor Yasuda. He was about 73 years old when I became his student. And um, it was such a great experience for me to work under somebody so experienced, so uh, brilliant, and so uh, entrenched in the field, and really one of the pioneers. So I consider myself uh, lucky to have worked under him and learned so much from him. And hopefully, um, you, many of you will have uh, similar stories. So I, uh, I got my PhD at University of Missouri um, doing plasma research. And I worked at a company called Exitec. I was a plasma scientist for Exitec for about uh, five years. Um, also, Savic Innovative Plastics is uh, what they were a division of. And I uh, had many great experiences there. Um, I had many global experiences. I got to travel. Do any of you uh, like to travel or interested in global travel? Yeah, many of you, most of you it looks like. Um, I've traveled uh, to Japan in particular eight times, um, which was a very, very interesting experience as a woman in the business world <laughs> in Japan. So Japan, uh, women and men are, are equal by law in every way. Um, but in, uh, in industry, and partic in particular, in the scientific field, there are many more men than women. And oftentimes, I would be the only woman um, in the meeting room or wherever we were uh, among many men, except for the women who were coming in to serve uh, tea and water. Um, so it was a little bit, uh, a little bit frightening at first. <laughs> but um, once I got there and met everyone, um, I've made so many dear friends there, and I have uh, developed many good relationships with them, and um, it, you know, it, it was no issue at all. Um, so, I, uh, but I would often find myself, um, well, I had teams in, uh, I had one team in India, and I had a team in Japan, and so we'd often have uh, conference calls to make sure we stay on track with our projects and so forth, and so, on some days, I'd wake up and have a meeting with India at 6 a.m., and then I'd have a meeting with my Japan team at 9 p.m. that night. So kind of interesting to, uh, to work around a schedule like that. So, and, um, so oh, another interesting experience I had is I, I got to train engineers in Japan. 
So engineers who barely spoke English, <laughs> and so I had a translator, but we, we sat for uh, about four days going through the training, and it was slow, but um, we were able to, able to overcome that language barrier um, with, uh, with the translators who were, you know, helped with visual aids, helped with, you know, really understanding what we were doing. So that was another very interesting experience. So I want to find out a little bit more about you. So how many of you know what area of science you want to go into? Yeah? What area? Medical? Okay. What about you? Biology? Okay. What got you interested in biology? Okay. That's good. And you? Marine biology? And why? Okay, yeah, the Galapagos, very interesting. Yeah, and you? Engineering, what type? Not sure yet. There are many different types of engineering, so um, there are a lot of options for you. Yep. Okay, very interesting. Mm hmm. Chemist, a chemistry scientist, a chemist, very cool, mm-hmm, yep. Medical field, what type or what area specifically, any thoughts or just medical? For animals, mm-hmm, yep. Medical school, very good, very good. So. Many of you know, but it's okay if you change your minds, too. I changed my mind. Many scientists change their mind um, over the years. And even after you go, even after you get a job or you're in your field, you can always um, transition over to, to other areas. So, good. Well, anyway, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I want you to um, get to work, <laughs> have some fun, and thank you so much um, for having me here today and letting me uh, talk with you about uh, math and science, and um, have a great day. Have a lot of fun.